Hey guys, welcome back to the Thought Cafe. It's your favorite hosts, Mira, Dada, and your other favorite host, Nikhil. I said we're all the favorite hosts. The oh, oh. There's no favoritism here. This is democratic. <laughs> Um, but um, we have a super exciting episode for you this week, which might not sound exciting, but trust me, it is. It's super interesting and affects all of our lives, which we'll get into our, this episode. But um, we'll be talking about antitrust laws, which I know, I know sounds boring, but trust us, um, we make it fun and interesting. And <laughs> honestly, I'm surprised we don't talk about this more. Like, I feel like it really is such a big issue. Like, especially with how much we use social media and stuff um, in this day and age. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a bigger issue that should be talked about more. Anyway, so we're going into antitrust laws, specifically with Facebook. But per usual, we have our disclaimer. Hey, guys. <laughs> we have a quick disclaimer. Just that two of us are 16. One of us is 15. Our opinions are obviously liable to change. We did do a little research, only one hour, but we're not professionals. And if you want to find our sources on the website, you can. But yeah. Um, and then, so going into our question of the day, um, we always have the section, just kind of what vibe do you give off? And obviously, because of our topic, our question of the day is, what kind of megatech corporation are you? So uh, let's get started with Mira, I guess. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. um, do, you, do you want me to go first? I think. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like you'd be, it's kind of hard. I've got it. You got it? It's not a megatech corporation, but I know it. What? I am so sorry. Know that I love you, okay? I think oh you're God. so cool. I think no. you're a Nokia. I'm Nokia? <laughs> what? Why? Let me explain. Let me explain. So I was seeing this <laughs> thing the other day, and it was like Nokia phones are solid in the sense that they're unbreachable, and they like if you drop them on the floor, like the floor will break. You throw it against a wall, <laughs> the wall will break. So I say this not in the sense that you are slow functioning, but because I don't. You're intelligent. You're deeply intelligent. And I love keep how you mind. have to like clarify that I am. <laughs> No, you are. And I have like a very strong emotional bond because like the first phone I ever got was like a hand-me-down Nokia for my dad. So like you indestructible and doing well in life, you know? So yeah. I'm a Nokia? Yeah. Yeah. You are. The same thing. I was going to be like iPod Touch, like not an iPhone, but like an iPod Touch because it's like, it's like simple. And like, it's yeah. like, not, not simple. You're not basic. <laughs> I'm just saying like, it's really cool. I don't know. Uh huh. Sure. Both of you guys just thinking I'm old, crappy tech. Uh huh. I see how. No, it is. you're indestructible. When you drop yeah. you against the floor, the floor will break, yeah. Mira. Yeah. If they had brick iPhones, that's what you would be. Exactly. <laughs> I am deeply offended, but um, it's okay. It's okay. All um, right. So Donna. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't. I don't, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> this is gonna sound really bad i feel like donna would be like samsung <laughs> no! like she she definitely um i don't know like you just find other ways because like obviously apple's like the big head but like you definitely have you're definitely like the person I, that like comes up with something new like i feel like you always come up with something new like new arguments or things like that because samsung was always the first ones to come up with like the the new whole like screen as the whole iphone and things like that so i don't know i feel like you innovate sometimes with your ideas. That's actually surprisingly sweet for someone that just called me Samsung. Thank you. <laughs> hey, both of you guys called me old crappy text. So, but <laughs> no, we called you indestructible. You just chose to focus on the negative part. <laughs> you no, know, but I think I don't. Okay, this is gonna. This isn't a tech company, but it kind of has to do with tech. I feel like Donna. So, like everybody knows the joke, like the FBI agents in our phones. Like really, I, really quickly, if you call me Bing, I will go to your house and punch you in the face. Oh no, you're not Bing. Bing is like, you you'd have to be at least fifty to be Bing. But I feel like Donna would be like the FBI system if there is like Donna would be the NSA. That's what Donna <laughs> is. Donna is the NSA overseeing all of these big tech companies and like shitting on them but also like like <laughs> creating surveillance around them that's what donna is <laughs> all right i'll take it 
Okay, okay. enough for Nikhil. I thought of Nikhil's while I was thinking about yours. Then you <laughs> Donna, what do you think Nikhil is? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm still desperately trying to think of one right now. Okay. So, Mira. Okay. Nikhil <laughs> is Nintendo. He is 10 million percent hands down Nintendo. Like, yes. Thank you. Nintendo so good. Yeah. Like I, I don't know what it is about him, but when you look at him, you're like, that is Yoshi. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> off, specifically Nikhil, you give off very strong Yoshi vibes. I don't know what it is, but like Nintendo is perfect for you. I would right. never have thought of that. That's amazing. Thank you. I Thank think you. that we both just agree. It's only Nintendo. <laughs> I should okay. like it. So after that lovely segment, I guess let's get into what we're really talking about, which is, I promise, just as lovely, guys. It's interesting. <laughs> so going into our topic today, we're going to be talking about antitrust laws. And I know it may not sound interesting, but it affects us in our everyday lives, all of us, even if you're a teenager or baby or an adult, it affects all of us. And it's actually pretty interesting. So basically, antitrust laws are laws created by the FTC, the Federal Trade Committee, which were designed to stop monopolies. And monopolies are bad for capitalist society because capitalist society is built on just basically competition because it's good for the consumer that no one brand can basically take over and spike the prices. An example of that is Luxordica. Luxotica? I messed that up. Luxotica. But basically, they're an eyewear monopoly that took over like a lot of like brands and basically they spiked the price by 20 times and basically they took advantage of the consumer so that's why monopolies are bad so in by today- the way really quickly as three people that all wear glasses let's just say we all have a vengeance for bad eyewear that is We're coming for you like Zotica. we are <laughs> yeah but yeah so basically there's natural monopolies and illegally attained monopolies are basically when you buy monopoly. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, whether just the whole antitrust suit against Facebook and things like that. Yeah. And also we're aware that there's also an antitrust suit against Google, but like, you know, if we get canceled by Facebook, yeah, we, we actually don't like care. <laughs> if we actually have a Facebook account, but like the stakes are higher with Google, you know, <laughs> yeah. if we would like to still be able to Google ourselves. Yeah. We don't care about Facebook. If yeah. Sandar is listening to this, please give us a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> we should tag facebook and google in our next post <laughs> like just see if they shout us out but um yeah so we're aware of they're both going on but we're just focusing on facebook um so donna do you kind of want to explain what's going on with facebook yes yeah, so just as a brief explanation um for all of you guys that don't you know get very invested in the recent antitrust suit that's being launched against big tech corporations. I know there's very few of you guys out there. Um Facebook basically got an antitrust suit um against them by the FTC. And basically what the demand is, it's that Facebook has been um, been creating a monopoly because it bought Instagram and it bought WhatsApp. And it's basically saying that because Facebook has such a large monopoly, they need to break it up into individual companies. And it's happening for the past few years, essentially. And Facebook's argument is two things. One, that the FTC already launched a suit against them and came up with no charges. And two, that consumers naturally like Facebook's product and naturally have been choosing it, as opposed to um, something that Monopoly has illegally done in establishing themselves as a monopoly. Well, so, was it not that the FTC? It wasn't that the FTC has already launched a suit. It was that the FTC had approved the purchase of WhatsApp and Instagram. Yeah. Sorry, so, then. Yeah. Facebook. Yeah. No, no, it's so, okay. Yeah. So the controversy here is that Facebook, especially Mark Zuckerberg, he's upset that why are they going back on the word and that like he thinks there's other competition, but we're not everyone's sort of confused about what competition really is out there because we we're talking about this before about we mostly gravitate towards where our friends are. That's just a natural part of like human behavior. And so we were talking about how can consumers switch to another platform if all our friends are on one of them? Right. I also do think that it goes into this conversation about like, again, like, do you really need to have competition in the social media industry? Because the biggest problem with monopolies, you know, are like, the drawbacks that it eventually has in the consumer. So as consumers, what drawbacks do we think we face from the social media that we're using right now? Well, I think I think for the consumer, obviously is the bigger Facebook gets, the more and like the more control it has over the other platforms, obviously the more information it ha- it can gain about its users because let's say you have an account on Facebook and it's linked to your Instagram account, 
And then all of that is also connected to your phone number, which is then connected to your WhatsApp account. You know, Facebook then has those three mediums to have just more information about um, what you like, what you're into through advertising and things like that. Um, and I think that can go into a conversation of do we want those tech companies to have that information? But besides this, the impact on the consumer, um, it's really the idea of which should we weigh more, the impact on the consumer or the impact on other small businesses and those starting up. Um, yeah. What do you guys think? I think another impact on the consumer is just, I know we're talking about this before, about how addicting it is and like how they just take all these data points because really it's like a vicious cycle. Like they create more content for you to watch then you watch the content and by watching the content, you give them more data points so they know how to specifically gear everything towards you. And eventually, I know there's like this whole movement going on on YouTube about how like people are trying to be like anti-social media, anti-off their phones and things like that because that's really what the, the purpose of social media, that's their purpose to get you to be on their app for as long as possible. And things like that. So I think that's the consumer downfall is that by owning all these platforms, they're able to combine all those data points into like one massive graph. And that way they can keep you on the app longer and sort of take you away from your life. Even if it's not a monetary harm, I think it's definitely like something harmful to just your way of living. You know, it would be super interesting though. So I think that we've established that because of Facebook having a monopoly, they have the ability to create super addicting platforms. But And I know that obviously there are other variables that go into this, but then I think that what that also implies is that if you have another smaller social media corporation that's trying to grow and their premise is that they're trying to build social media that's not addicting, do they even have to compete? Obviously, they do have to compete with Facebook and other aspects, but I do think a really important aspect to then look at is if the drawback is Facebook has all this information on you and can addict you and another social media app's platform is that they're not going to addict you. Isn't that fair competition in and of itself? I don't think that's social media because that's how they make money by having people be addicted to their app. I don't think you're going to rise as a social media brand if people aren't addicted to your thing. I think there's definitely some like, uh, I forget what the word is. Like there's two contrasting words between social media and not being addicted because I think that's how they get the majority of their money. They're antonyms almost because the, the way they get their, the, the way they get their money is by running ads, right? So the more time someone spends on the app, the more money they can get because that means the more ads they can show the person using the app. So I don't know how you can create a successful social media app um, without that. Yeah. And I think another example of this, which is one of the main competitors to um, Instagram and things like that, which Instagram stole again, like they stole from Snapchat. Because as we know, Instagram tried to buy um, Snapchat uh, a couple of years ago for $1 billion and Snapchat didn't let them. So they stole Snapchat stories, which they now have as one of their features. And as we see the rise of TikTok too, which is super like addicting if you think about it, you can, it's literally endless scrolling. Like it doesn't stop. Like at least on Instagram, once you've gone through the last two days, it eventually stops. But then on TikTok, you can keep scrolling and Instagram actually added Instagram Reels, which is similar to TikTok, but they've also added it so you can keep scrolling. But once you finish everyone you're following, then it also starts bringing up other things too. So I think Instagram is really just taking everything from every other social media and adding it to their own platform. But is that really negative? Like, I think, you know, if if that's what consumers are into, then they're naturally just going to go to the platforms that have features that they're, like, attracted to. If Instagram starts innovating to get these features that other consumers are attracted to, like, Here's a really perfect idea. I think TikTok's a really great example of what we're talking about, right? So we're talking about having social medias that are competing. TikTok rose right in front of our eyes, I think. You know, like these past few years, all of us watched TikTok grow rapidly. It didn't matter that Facebook had a monopoly in the industry. TikTok grew regardless because they just had features that consumers were attracted to. And, you know, I don't think we've seen efforts from Facebook to buy TikTok, not to my knowledge. I, and I don't think Facebook's monopoly really had anything to do there. I think it's different. I think TikTok is an entertainment industry like YouTube, because I don't think you can call TikTok a social media, but I don't think most people don't spend time looking at their friends' TikToks. They, they spend it on the explore page where they just watch random people. So I don't know if it would be similar. I think it'd be more similar to YouTube in that aspect. So I just Googled it. Um, so Facebook had actually tried to buy Musical.ly, which if you guys don't know, was the original of tiktok um but it was 
on the, Facebook wasn't able to buy it and instead the Chinese tech com- tech giant, as Business Insider describes it, ByteDance merged with it. And to my understanding, I think ByteDance has a monopoly over the Chinese tech industry. So I mean, I think that goes into a larger conversation about global monopolies and like things like that. But I, I actually did. I, to my understanding, TikTok was bought by a separate monopoly, just not an American one. Yeah, I I was also, I know you talked about um, music and I read this a little bit before too, but you guys all know the famous fine app that died. And so there's been a lot of speculation mm-hmm. about how Mark Zuckerberg actually shut down Vine by removing the feature to add friends through Facebook. So I think that's another example of them just completely destroying the market by using their platform to take over other platforms. And even though they're not buying it, they're still not allowing their resources. They're not giving their resources to other people, which is essentially just like closing down giant businesses. So I think that's actually the answer to a question that we were talking about earlier, which is that what are the drawbacks to consumers? I think that's a really good answer in the sense that because Facebook had such a large monopoly, when Vine refused to cooperate with them, Vine was shut down. And that was a drawback to us as consumers because who doesn't love Vines that you watch at 2 a.m. when you have no will to live, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But even besides that, I mean, Vine was less of a site where you ca- where it's communication based. But imagine if they did that to um, an app like Telegram or something, which is a you know maybe a competitor to WhatsApp in the sense it has similar features um, in like text, like the way you communicate in text and whatever. Like that's a communication based platform, which I bet there are some people out there who could almost fully rely on that as their only means of communication with others. So. Imagine if, you know, Facebook, if they really wanted to draw an app like Telegram into the ground and really only wanted WhatsApp to dominate there, they'd be basically cutting communication for, I don't know how many people use Telegram, but my guess is probably at least hundreds of thousands of people. And that definitely hurts the consumer. But how would they do that? Because you know how with Vine you had that, you know, you had that necessary link between Vine and Facebook as adding friends on Facebook. Well, how would they do that with Telegram? Because to my knowledge, they're they're kind of completely interdependent. Well, I mean, one, thing, independent. one thing you can look at, which yesterday when I was researching, like in my own free time, I was looking at like Instagram algorithm and things like that, how to grow things like that. And they were talking about the big three platforms that are probably not going to go away for the next couple of decades, which are Instagram and Facebook, which are the same things. And then you also have the competitors, which are YouTube and LinkedIn. YouTube is owned by Google and LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft, right? So LinkedIn is pretty similar to Instagram and Facebook, except that it's work-related, right? It's it's it's, it's, it's a social media yeah. platform. Yeah, so I guess. The question I have is, why haven't they taken over uh, LinkedIn yet? Do you think it's because Microsoft is at that? And is LinkedIn a competitor, even if it's more work-related? Well, I think you then have to look into incentive structures and, like, like what incentive does Facebook have to take over LinkedIn, you know? Versus, like, I think Amira's point about, like, WhatsApp. Like, if they want WhatsApp to dominate the market, then they would need to take Telegram out of it. But Facebook doesn't seem, like, they don't really have another version of LinkedIn, right? Because LinkedIn is so solely work-related. I don't think Facebook has an incentive unless they want to create a work version of LinkedIn and then they want it to compete. Well, I don't use LinkedIn, but I'm pretty sure you can share LinkedIn profiles through Facebook. I think that is something you can do. So I think, if anything, Facebook might actually be benefiting from LinkedIn in the sense of if you're on someone's LinkedIn page, I don't, I'm not entirely sure about this but i'm pretty sure you can probably add a facebook you know contact info you know what i mean like i don't know maybe but um you can add maybe you, I, i'm pretty sure you probably add your facebook profile to linkedin so then if let's say you're on someone's linkedin profile and you want to check out their facebook marketplace because they have you know a company and then i don't know you know facebook can then get more users from the linkedin platform so i think they might actually benefit from that well i guess then that kind of draws us into this conversation about how, you know, you have these gigantic big tech. And I noticed when Nikhil was going off of his list of tech companies, every tech company that he was talking about was a part of some gigantic corporation. So I think what we've kind of ended up moving into is oligopolies. And sure, oligopolies benefit each other. But in terms of, like, I think when it comes to like a regular basis, 
when you have things like the oligopoly and like the airplane industry or the healthcare industry that has negative drawbacks on the consumer when it comes to social media oligopolies are we seeing those well i mean i was sad when vine went away (laughs) (laughs) but i think there's also this difference though i don't know if it actually affects them because there is a whole movement on youtube where viners move to youtube and you can see it there's musically people who move to youtube and even now there's a lot of are moving to youtube because i think people are so all these like giant like influencers and like internet personalities i think they're worried about what's happening and how fast it's changing but i think they know that youtube is always going to be there and i think youtube is sort of a safe place that doesn't really have competition either right like you well, facebook and instagram aren't really competing with youtube so they know they can stay there and i think that also shows why they're sort of monopoly because we don't see any instagrammers moving to youtube because they know instagram is safe well that goes into google's monopoly if anything because again youtube's a google-owned company but i mean i think facebook and instagram aren't threatened by um youtube because again like what donna was saying they're basically not codependent but you know it's like an interdependent system right yeah interdependent oligopolies in a sense so I, again, like same to the comparison I drew with LinkedIn, I think if anything, they benefit from the existence of one another. Um, but I think we're kind of reaching a close in our conversation here. Um, we're definitely going to explore more of this topic after the break. But for now, you know, just sit with your own thoughts. Let us know what you think um, by commenting or reviewing our episode. And we'll be back after a short music break. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the second part of our antitrust podcast. And this part of the podcast, we just want to clarify what we talked about before about the uh, oligopolies. I don't know how to pronounce it if that was right, but um, <laughs> <That's pretty good. laughs> oligopoly. Yeah, ol- oligo- ol- oligopolies. Yeah, if you want to search up how to pronounce the word, you can always hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So if you guys wanted to, def- I think we did a little research during our break. But if you guys want to talk about, just clarify what an oligopoly is. Yes, so we looked into it, and you know how we made the discovery that oligopolies on social media are interdependent? So one of the main pillars of an oligopoly is interdependence. One of the main four pillars. There are four of them. (laughs) So, uh, we didn't actually do any hot work last time. It's apparently just a part of it, and, um, we're just stupid, but, uh, (laughs) yeah. And again, this just highlights how unqualified we are to be talking about this, so take everything we say with a grain of salt this big talking about, <laughs> talking about unqualified do you think the uh ftc is unqualified oh <laughs> did you want wait did you guys watch the um zuckerberg um trials yeah, that was oh crazy. my god that iconic moment where they go how does facebook get money and mark zuckerberg <laughs> mark zuckerberg goes uh so we run ads <laughs> that i think was... i got secondhand embarrassment from watching the, the testimonies <laughs> Yeah, no, but honestly, that's a great question, because especially with these hearings and stuff, you're honestly, (laughs) um, we've honestly been able to really take a look at, does our government actually know, especially like in relation to social media, how these companies actually work? And if they're the ones who plan on breaking it up, and they know this little about how social media companies actually function, like, will they be actually be able to break it up effectively? Yeah, so I have like a, a hot, I don't know if this is a hot take or not. It might be a cold take. We'll see. But, um, but like, I know, I think a lot of people talk about experience, right? About how like, because most of the people I think in the Federal Trade Committee are typically older. I think maybe older than 30 or 40. I don't know the exact age, but they're definitely a lot older than most of the people that use apps like Instagram. They might be on Facebook a lot, but they definitely don't use Instagram as much as say we do. So I think just because them having experience in life, I don't think they're necessarily the right people because I think to really like understand what Instagram does and Google and any tech company that you're filing an antitrust suit against, I think it needs to be more younger people. And I think the ideal age would maybe be around 25. I know that sounds kind of young to be like taking part in politics, but I think if they gathered a group of people that was like brilliant at that age, I think that would definitely be more um, effective than what they're doing right now. Well, I don't think it even has to be like 25 year olds. I just think having people that aren't like 
80 year old you know like having people that are just at bare minimum younger than 50 would be nice Shout out, well, <laughs> well besides even like an age thing just people who are competent in the field and i remember watching back at the beginning of the 2020 election um when andrew yang was still running um one of his interviews he brought up the idea that if he was elected um that he would possibly consider creating um a position in his cabinet for like information technology or like a tech secretary of technology kind of cabinet position and i thought that was kind of interesting and i don't know if i fully agree with that but i feel like especially when it comes to the power that these social media companies have in today's world i don't know if it's a bad one so what do you guys think about possibly having a cabinet position like that I think a cool thing is that even at my dad's work, I forget what it is, but they have like groups for each race to like promote diversity and things like that. The one other group they have is they have like a group of people that's just, uh, it's like groups, it's like adults who are less than 30 who work at the company. And basically you can sit in on one of those meetings and learn like how like the next generation is moving forward and they're working and what they're doing to innovate. So I think maybe something like that might be interesting for the government. Well, I don't even think like what the next generation is doing, but on the whole idea of a secretary of information and technology, I think the idea of having just like a pure secretary dedicated to administering over that is fascinating because I do think like right now you see a lot of technology that doesn't really have legislation surrounding it. Like even if you want to look into like, let's take a random tech topic, like freedom of speech online there's no real legalization of like what should be allowed what shouldn't be allowed and you see a lot of these corporations kind of going in blind when it comes to muting certain voices that are maybe you know like inciting something bad or talking about like hate speech and i think if you look into the way our government is run maybe a hundred years from now i do think that you're going to see a lot more administration of technology and maybe you're going to see a lot of people that that are like why on earth didn't you have this legislation before and that are confused about why it took so long for technology to start being legislated i think that's a hard topic to talk about like besides monopoly of like technology i think talking about like what you can and can't block on the internet is a more difficult thing because I think that goes into our basic rights. And I think it'll take a long time for us to actually set rules. And I don't even know if there should be rules set on the internet about what should and shouldn't be put up. Well, I don't I, I don't really know if we want to get into the conversation of what should and should not be put up. But I think in general, because of, I mean, like, look at our own president of the United States, how I mean, I guess you can't really use Twitter that much anymore. <laughs> yeah, <let's go. laughs> but, um, you know, for basically the past, the entirety of his past four years as president, like, or even e- even away from the president, like the majority of our pol- politicians use social media as a way to communicate to the greater public. I mean, look at when there was that incident in Hawaii where they thought they were under nuclear attack. The way that the governor of Hawaii told like the state that they weren't under a nuclear attack was by tweeting. Like they found out <laughs> they weren't going to die because of a nuclear attack from a tweet. So considering that social media has this much influence in our politics and stuff, I think it's crazy how we don't have anyone overseeing it or regulating it or making sure that we have the I don't know, any kind of regulation around it. Considering exactly how much you see politicians using social media, I would say I 100% agree in the sense that someone else is in control of the social media that politicians have now used. And that means that our politicians are no longer first and foremost in charge of their own community. Like, obviously they are. And obviously that goes into the ethics of who runs these social media corporations. And I don't think you see these people going around doing anything that's you know, unfair currently, and I think that's just a very large debate. But I do think it's insane to think of the fact that somebody else is in charge of the communication channels that the president of the United States is using. Yeah, and I think, like, one crazy example, this is another bad question that they asked, is one of the ladies who is part of the, uh, was it the FTC, I think, she, like, asked Sundar Pichai, if you don't know who he is, he's the CEO of Google, about how when you search up, I think, whether it was, like, dumb or stupid, it was, like, some, like, derogatory term that Donald Trump is the first person to come up. So they were speculating about how this comes up. And I think since they didn't really understand the algorithm of like how Google works and how things like that, obviously not everyone's going to understand that. But I think them asking like these basic questions, I think a better use of time would be if they already knew it, if we already had people, like you guys said, who already knew the algorithm and things like that. 
because we're 15 year olds and none of us are even like STEM kids who are super into tech or anything like that. We're just 15 year olds who use social media and we know these More. things. Yeah. yeah, most mm. of us know how or the basics of the Google algorithm about why things show up when they do. And it's it's pretty easy to read about it online and things like that. So I think the main point of harm is here is just not having informed people or like basically informed. You don't need to know everything, but I think just having a general information before you go into it is more important. Well, actually, this is this is semi related. It's kind of moving into an entirely different conversation. But I remember there was this one New York Times article that was interviewing AOC um, a couple weeks after the election. And she was basically talking about how after the election, there was quite a large degree of Democrats that were angry at AOC for a lot of the rhetoric that she used prior to the election. And they were blaming her for being too radical. And that's why you hadn't seen too many House Democrat seats being picked up that were blue. Now, this is an entirely different conversation, but there was one very specific line she used in that interview that's stuck in my head ever since. And she was like, a large reason that they didn't win their elections is because they don't know how to market. For example, they only used Facebook marketing like two weeks before the election. And she was like, that's ridiculous in a virtual election. Why on earth wouldn't you do that way beforehand? And I think the fact that she picked up specifically on the fact that you need to market online, you need to do it on Facebook, and you need to do that productively really says a lot about the qualifications that, you know, like younger people may have in this field, whereas you have older politicians that are like, how does Facebook get money and don't really understand? Yeah, and a lot of people, I think a lot of people put her down, right, because she ran a grassroots campaign, right? Is that how she got elected and things like that? Like, I don't think she went to like Harvard or Stanford. She didn't go to like the top two schools in the world or Oxford or something like that. And I think just because you have all these degrees, maybe they have PhDs or whatever they have or their experience in politics, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have the right or you have the background premise experience to actually just take part in these things. Not that they can't take part in it, but that at least they should be, maybe they should be informed by AOC or someone who has more knowledge before they actually go into the meeting so they don't waste the time of those people and when everyone's watching in the world, you don't want them asking questions about, oh, how does the algorithm work when it's pretty basic? Yeah. And even AOC isn't an expert in this field. She's mm-hmm. just a younger woman who just has, you know, more experience in being online and social media, but she's not even an expert. But we're talking about her as if she's the expert in our government about this, because in reality, she's, again, one of these few congressmen and women who seems to know about this stuff. And it's it's just wild to me, like watching those congressional hearings. Yeah. And hearing some of those I think he's some guy asked Sundar Pichai, like if his phone was tracking him, like at this moment in time. And like Sundar Pichai asked if he could see like the settings and the guy was like, no, because he was scared that like Google was tracking him all the time. So obviously if anybody's ever used Google, when you open the app, it says, do you want this app to use your location now all the time or when you're using the app? Like it's basic things like this that sort of just show that these people aren't really, not that they're not qualified, but that they could have done more stuff or we could have had more qualified people for these type of suits and tasks. Yeah. So I think we've all kind of come to an agreement on this, that there definitely needs to be more in politics and politicians who are aware of the issues around this. But um, kind of going back to our main question and taking into account what we've concluded about with politicians, Um, what do we think the government, from our knowledge, should do about the issue with Google? Um, Do we think Google should be broken up? Do we think that there are grounds for Google to be broken up? And Facebook? Should they do it considering they don't know as much as we would want them to know about Facebook? I mean, Facebook? Yeah, did I say Facebook? Yeah, you said Google. Oh, sorry, I meant meant Facebook. We were just talking about Google site. Yeah, I meant Facebook. For Facebook? Um... I would say that I think, obviously, you know, this is a gigantic conversation. Obviously, we all know that there's variables we haven't taken into account yet. We all understand that. But I would say that before Facebook gets broken up, I would like a government that is just a little bit more competent when it comes to technological issues before enacting any kind of these actions. Just because I think right now the level that you see our government work at isn't one that's supremely qualified when it comes to this kind of tech. So, like, sure, maybe in 10 years or, like, five years that they can do it, but I would like to see some kind of technological division be created that exclusively created of people that understand how Facebook works. 
Yeah, for my perspective from Facebook and Google, just because I think now we're in an era of lots of new businesses and lots of entrepreneurial personalities, I think, not talking about the consumer, talking about like an entrepreneurial perspective of anybody out there who's in the world, I think it's the best time to start something. I think by them having a monopoly, it's not necessarily bad for the businesses because especially since they haven't, I know we talked about advertising before about them spiking the prices, but their prices are pretty reasonable and they haven't spiked the prices yet. So I think just keeping them together, I think might be the best thing for now until we actually see them use an abuse of power, which I don't think they will. Yeah, I mean, I generally agree. I disagree with the fact that I don't know if they, I think we can't really gauge right now if they'll use it as an abuse of power because I don't know, I, I could see Facebook doing something like that um, because how large the monopoly is and if someone got into their way, I don't know if they, I, I don't really know what they would do, but I wouldn't put it past them to do something bad necessarily but um i generally agree i don't i think these lawsuits take a long time so i think it's okay that they're starting to investigate it now but in general like we need political reform in this field and i i I hope that's something the biden administration can try to accomplish all right well i think on that note this conversation has kind of come to an end so you know just as a closing premise as always all of our sources are cited on our website which has actually been recently launched so now you can actually go find our website january 10th 2021 so a check out ww well not ww check out the thought cafe podcast.com and go to the episodes um link and then you should be able to find all of our sources which will be cited um also you can find them on our social media as mira has you know, created, engineered. <laughs> yeah, and um, please, please, please leave us a review, even if it's not five stars, or though we appreciate five stars. Any kind of feedback on the episodes we're making is helpful. And also, please comment um, what you like about the episodes, what you don't like, so that, again, we're new, we're just starting out. Um, we'd love... Any kind of constructive criticism. Yeah. It's just great. We really um, appreciate it. Plus, it brings up our engagement, so... <laughs> <laughs> We just like more viewers, guys. We know that right now it's just our three friends, and we'd like to build a little. Plus a couple people in Serbia. Our Serbian <laughs> audience is growing. We have, I think, like three people in Serbia, which might be VPNs. Oh, but... <laughs> it's either VPN or three loyal Serbians, and either way, we love you guys. Um, but anyways, on that note, I guess we'll see you guys next week, and um, see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs>